Hi everybody, this is Moduli Stack, and I am bringing you the fourth game of the Overmind series. So again, over here on the right, as the White Terran, is the human, my roommate, Odigo Vinyals, also known as X-Terms, who is, uh, uh, again, much faster than the computer at this stage, so he should be proud of that. Now, what we're going to see in this game is a lot of Goliaths. Uh, at the time this game was played, the Overmind was having quite a bit of difficulty against Goliaths. Uh, because of their long range, you have to sort of treat them a little bit differently than you treat other units. You can't exactly micro against them. You have to be a little bit scared of Goliaths that might be somewhere, because if you get too close, if you get close enough to see them, that might actually be too close. You might have uh, a lot of other Goliaths around, etc. SCVs being built. So, Oriol is going to, similar to the last game where he just made a lot of Dragoons and did quite well with that, just choosing good positions to engage. He's going to make a bunch of Goliaths this game, and we're going to see how that is turning out. See, he's starting off a little bit of a wall off here with the Supply Depot. Uh, I never did get the hang of walling off in StarCraft 1. Uh, I didn't play Terran much, but it just, it, you have to learn all these weird rules about when it's a perfect wall and all this stuff. Never, never could get used to that. Going to scout to the north. In the meantime, Sparky the Wonder Drone coming up here to the right side. It's such a shame that I've been talking a lot about Sparky the Wonder Drone and keep referring to him as Sparky the Wonder Drone, but we haven't gotten really to see him do any uh, truly amazing things that would usually indicate being worthy of a name like Sparky the Wonder Drone. Huh, interesting. Overmind not building that 11th drone. Uh, not sure why exactly you would do this, except possibly to get a slightly quicker expansion. Might be a bug. Might be a change that was added later. Gas going up for X terms, so no fast expansion. Probably going to see one or two quick factories. And he should go right in Goliath production. Though, if you do know what the Overmind is going to do, might be superior to expand first and then go into Goliath production because you will still have those Goliaths out in time, but you'll have a much stronger economy. In the meantime, those th three, three larvae worth of Zerglings are in the way, and uh, I would expect this to be an expansion. Oh no, it gets the expansion blocked. So it doesn't, doesn't manage to expand right away. Now that's, that's uh, an interesting thing. What is the Obermind going to do in response to that? And this is kind of an interesting question. It looks like a drone is going up here, possibly to expand to this corner. Now, that may seem kind of insane to you. Why doesn't he just expand right here? But it's important to realize how programming for this kind of situation works. You have to understand the situation in order to react well to it. So all that the Overmind knows is that, well, I tried to build an expansion, and it didn't work. And doesn't know if it didn't work because there was a building there, or because there's a bunch of units there, or what. Just it didn't work, so I'm going to try to expand up here. And this could be an okay de decision depending on the situation. Uh, here, of course, he could have just put it down here, after the SCV left. Or got chased away. Uh, ooh, some blood there. Not sure where that was, maybe a Zergling. Does kill Sparky. That's too bad factory has been finished and a second factory on the way as well as an armory now this stage of the game is going to be a little bit slow um expansion is getting up and getting the gas just getting the layer now and since this has been kind of a dead spot in the other games i do want to give some shout outs to some people obviously the first shout out goes out to professor daniel klein and the overmind team for all their hard work doing this uh, amazing bot that has done so well um, my roommate, Oriol, shout out to him for introducing me to this project in the first place. Shout out to Ars Technica for bringing everyone's attention to this project. And finally, shout out to Reddit for watching my commentaries. Uh, StarCraft 2 class Reddit has been nice enough to provide some, some commentaries for me, to, or some replays rather, for me to look at even. And that's been nice. So... <clears throat> Now that I have dispensed all of those things, I can point out that there's an engineering bay on the way as well as a third factory and uh, the Charon booster upgrade to get that extra range on those Goliaths, which is very important in making them deadly mutilisk killing machines. Lair only just now finishing, though. 
and uh, interesting. Drone holding some gas, gonna make an extractor. And the spire goes down right away. And this is a distinct difference from the other games. This spire went down immediately. In the other games, I, I think what happened here is that Overmind often wants to build these extra spine crawlers. <laughs> they're not spine crawlers. No, they're not. They're, they're sunken colonies. He wanted to build these sunken colonies. That is natural expansion, but he doesn't have a natural expansion, so he probably just skipped those, and as a result needed a lot fewer minerals and was able to just get this going much faster. So do like that. Do like the quickly timed spire. Engineering bay is floating off. Um, I, I'm going to mention this because this is a pretty cool thing that you, of course, know about if you played Brood War, but if not, you might not know about it. So <clears throat> the idea is that Xterms did make that engineering bay to get some turrets because he knows that he is going to be defending against mutalisks. So the engineering bay is necessary to build those turrets, but after that, you don't need it. So why not float it off and scout your opponent with it? Of course, if you play StarCraft 2, you probably wouldn't have thought of this because the engineering bays in StarCraft 2 do not float. So that's kind of a sad thing. Missile turret, another one going down here, and some more supply depots. This is a little bit awkward of a path going down here. Three Goliaths hanging out, more on the way. Yeah, a little bit supply blocked right now. Also floating his barracks down this way. He did get two Marines out, and they are, let's see... It looks like they're hanging out up here to watch for expansions, and that is smart. But he doesn't need that barracks anymore, so that barracks is also going to scout for expansions. And this engineering bay is going to just try to see what's going on. And, of course, it's going to see exactly what is going on. Namely, mutalisks are out. And that is about all that's going on right now. I don't know if he knows about the absence of this natural expansion and the presence of this or not. Be an interesting thing to consider, but Mutalisks are going to quickly pick up on this target. As I've said several times, they do prioritize targets with a number of different uh, factors going into that. But here you can clearly see that this is just kind of a free kill, right? No threat. Costs some money. I definitely can kill it. It's not close to anything dangerous. So, kind of a no-brainer to kill that. Of course, the more common Starcraft Wisdom might be, okay, well I'm going to go harass him right away and kill it later. But, Good to get it now while you can. Well, you know where it is. Ring up here. Overlords uh, being quite active. And this is something I've always liked about the Overmind to see just how good its vision of the map is. And it does get better as the game goes on. Now, this Flock of Mutalists is finally approaching, so we are going to see. Ooh, not going to be able to harass very much there because a lot of Charon Booster upgrades. Ooh, and he's even gotten the. Um, Looks like he's even gotten the plus one attack for those units. So extra strong against the Mutalisks. Really do like that. Another supply depot going up. These Mutalisks are not going to be able to do very much right now. But they have scouted, let's see, taking out an SCV right there. Have they spotted this barracks? Guess not. They're going back up this way. <clears> hmm. <throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, Goliath's positioned really well, but no expansion yet for X-Terms. Might be wanting to think about one pretty soon, although this is a pretty tough army, so it's not like he needs to expand right away, but landed the barracks. Not sure why he would land the barracks. Thinking about making a marine, possibly. Okay, Amutalisks coming around this way, finding the one hole in the defense here. Going to pick off this turret right away. X-Terms reacting with the Goliaths. Going to come in, and oh, a couple of them up here. These Mutalisks uh, getting trapped, getting pinned. They're gonna go this way, but that's not the right direction. They get caught in an arc of Goliaths, take a lot of turret damage, and try to pick off this turret, but finally just run away. Pick off that SCV, but lost a lot of Mutalisks there, took a lot of damage. He did, the one thing he did get was a really good view of the entire base, so he knows exactly where the turrets are now. He being, of course, the Overmind. And that is going to help in plotting out these sort of threat maps, or whatever whatever exactly they call them, that the Overmind does use in determining where to attack. You sort of form a convex hull around threatening things and try to pick off the corners. It's uh, pretty, pretty cool to look at those maps. They have some videos online about that, I believe. I will link to those uh, in the description of this video. 
if I can find them. Yeah, also check out my channel. I'm gonna link to, well, you can easily find my channel, but also check out Odigal's webpage, which I will also link to. And if you go to Berkeley, check out Daniel Klein's uh, AI StarCraft class, which is going on this semester. That's looking to be pretty good. A lot of mutalists coming in here. No, not going to move in just yet. 74 supply for the Overmind, 86 for X terms. Still has not taken as natural, they're just now putting down a hatchery at the natural expansion. I'm gonna pick off this Goliath probably. Yeah, taking a little bit more damage than should. Okay, this weakened turret, gonna pick that off. Come again, going up into the zone of death, but but still, I mean, actually out of range of most of the Goliaths, and so able to do a good job picking off some SCVs and then getting this turret without even taking that much damage. Oh, of course, so many Goliath shots, but these Mutalisks do have the Carapace upgrade, which does, I believe, negate that plus one attack. Wow. And then coming back this way to pick off the two Goliaths here, and these Goliaths having to walk all the way back. Look at this. He's walled himself off. Oh, this is a really bad thing to do. Uh, this supply depot and this machine shop block this entire army from moving off this way. And then these two supply depots even make it hard for him to move down here. When he does choose to expand, I would hope that he corrects some of these little issues in his buildings. Needs to put those in better places. Yeah, that's all these Goliaths getting trapped up here. And in case you haven't noticed, pathing in StarCraft 1, not the best pathing in any game, I think. So 